I don't know about this. Alright, so I don't have any history on this, this engine. No idea what type of machine, what it came off of, other than a snowblower. It was a snowblower. It's a Snow King engine, that's what they came off of. Means tune up. I imagine it does. No history on it at all. Let's check it. I haven't even looked at the thing. It's got oil in it. It's not fresh, but it does have oil in it. It's a start. We're going to pull the plug. We're going to throw this plug in the garbage, first of all. It's a fast fire. Might as well be called a no fire. They're just about as good as torch spark plugs. Right, Mr. Pender? If you watch these, Bruce has a torch spark plug necklace. <laughs> Actually, I believe it's shorted too. That's going in the rubbish right off the bat. I've got it C-clamped to the bench, so if it does run, it doesn't go walking all over and falling on the floor. Carb bowl has a, one of those little tickler valves on it, so let's see. Let's see what's in it. <laughs> if anything. Well, let's see if there's anything in here. Yeah, there's fuel in there. It's old. Fuel valve is on, so all the carbs should be full. Let's see what we get out of her. Something's coming out. Shut the fuel valve off there. Actually, let's let it run for a minute. Oh, it's not running. Our float bolt, our float could be stuck at the top. It's not letting any more fuel through, so. Whatever was in the bowl was coming out, and it stopped. Let's see what uh, what we gathered. Eh, not too crazy bad. Let's see if we can get a view of that without dumping it all over the place. Not fresh, that's for sure. That's going to get flushed out anyways. So we know that that is going to be an issue. Choke's not hooked up to anything. Want to do a compression test on it, but ideally you want the throttle wide open and the choke open so you can get as max amount of air as you can into there. I was going to just do the compression test first, but looks like I'll be taking this off first. I want to make sure that choke is open. So I'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers to pull this off. Fill up screwdriver for there. Uh, rusty 8mm up top. And that's likely all we need. Yeah. Eight mil. Phillips screwdriver. Pliers. Let's get this off first. These just pull straight off. Just got to be gentle. They are plastic. They can break. That's off. Our kill key is out. That's not going to interfere. Two Phillips screws here. They will thread directly into the carburetor. In the in the uh, there's a bracket on the front of them. A couple of screws in. One more on the top. Just spinning. See what else we can get on there. Oh, it moved a little, but not exactly what we need. I don't know if we're going to win that one. Oh yeah, now it moves. A little perseverance and a little more penetrating oil. Loose. Loose she is. Oi, V. I'd say that's a mess. 
<laughs> we did bend that tab a little. Let's reposition it back where it was. That's it's exactly what it was, just a slot. So it came out pretty easy. So our kill wire is screwed to the frame of the engine, but just get a little plug on it on this end, so we'll just disconnect it, get it out of the way. I see mouse nest. That cover's gotta come off to make sure that the mice have not completely blocked off all the cooling fins. Warm in here. Somebody needs to turn that furnace down. <laughs> Throttle's kind of a mess. Well, that's all right. Anyways, don't care. Wide open. Choke is off. Now it should actually work with the choke knob. Now that I've rehooked it. Yep. This just needs a little bend. Choke is now functioning. Let's get our compression tester in there. We'll see what kind of numbers we get. You guys still see okay? Yeah. You should always ground your spark plug when you're making it spark. Sometimes coil damage can, can happen if you don't have your coil grounded, so we'll just put a plug in it, set it against the engine there. Plug our tester on. Zero. Give her some pulls. That's pretty low. Getting about 80 pounds of compression. Huh. That's kind of low. Bet you it's worn out. Just gonna check visually to see if the valves are moving. Yeah, they're going up and down, all right. And they're going up and down enough. on the side of the side of the board here. Low compression before we even think about the carburetor. Let's pull that cylinder head off. We're still in diagnostic mode here so just gotta make sure that it's actually a decent enough candidate to do any more work on it. Pull the head off it takes little little time to do that. Get the fuel tank off first. We'll leave the valve on it so we can shut it off. It does have liquid in it still. We'll leave the valve on, take the hose off of the valve on that end. And we can remove the tank so we got some half inch. Looks like they're all half inch up there. Little baby impact gun. Hands full of gas. Rubber grip on the gun. Not good. Not a good combination. The three bolts holding this tank on are also cylinder head bolts. And they're all the same size. It's a cute little tank. Look at this. Look at it. It's wee. It's a wee gas tank. There's a piece on the back. Gas over the bench here. Those three are out. Two more here that hold this front cover on. Good thing we were taking them off anyways. Is that a 716 down there? Yeah. 
seven sixteenths. <clears throat> seven sixteenths. We'll put it on a wobbly extension to see if I can get in there without having to wrench them out. This one works. This one gonna work for us? No. <laughs> Seven sixteenths. Now that it's loose, now it's loose, it might. Yeah, good enough. That's out, that's out. Two more on the top. And then that cover should come off. Recoil cover. We'll get all the bolts loose. That's 7 sixteenths. It's a little bolt that goes into a head bolt that holds everything on. So I gotta pull these off too. It's always something. All the same size so far. This should slide off. Let's see the size of the critter nest in there. Yeah. It should slide off, but it won't because there's a guard on there. There's a shield holding it on. The shield is covering the provision for electric starter. This engine could have been equipped with an electric starter. It does not have a starter, so it has a shield to take its place. I'm going to put that little screw back in there so I don't lose it. But I can see the remnants of mouse nest. Still. Oh yeah, she's a good one. Our primer line is hooked up still. Little primer tube. Where, where are you going? Where are you? There you are. Get that out. Oh, yep. Mouse nest. The rope is frayed. If it's uh, going to be rebuildable, I'll change that rope out. But yeah, we got a mess there. Get that out of there. Have a little overheat. Your engine in a hurry. Even in the winter time when this is designed to be used, that will overheat the engine. You need to have airflow over those cylinder heads and the bore, the sleeve. Let's get that in the garbage. That's been in there quite a while. That's pretty dry. Okay. I'm gonna cover up that plug hole with my thumb and blow that crap out of there because it's all over the gas head. Why you check out for rodent damage? Let me get you zoomed in there so you can see something. Hopefully, it's focusing where I want it to. This wire here is our kill wire, as designed, it's supposed to be hooked up here to the coil to shut it off. You push the lever down, and that grounds that wire, and it grounds it, it grounds the coil, and kills the spark. The coil will fire without that wire hooked up, but the coil will not shut off. So we wouldn't have been able to shut the engine off. We'd have to choke it out or something. <laughs> the things you find. Things you find. Let's get a screwdriver in there. Phillips. <clears throat> Maybe the big Phillips. Number three. Oh, yep. Get our muffler taken off of there. Good thing it's not loose or not tight. Sometimes they seize. They're usually pretty good though. These two screws are also holding that bracket on that we were fighting with that seized up bolt. There we go, our gasket is broken. It's crumbling to dust. There's evident. I forgot you guys were zoomed in. 
way in. There. There we go. So the exhaust to the muffler gasket had been blown for quite a while. It's blown exhaust out over here. Zoom out. Zoom out. Look up. Let's get that head off. Two more bolts. These guys, that's a short one. That's a short one. That's a short one. All three of these were short ones. They were in these three corners. You can tell actually, these are all tall, tall bosses. These are three short ones. Well, let's see. That piston is surprisingly clean. Very surprising. One score mark in there that was going to lose compression. Just a sl slight amount. I think this thing was uh, recently repaired. I'm going to pop you out of the stand. It's easier to bring you to the engine than it is to bring the engine over here. I want you to see that piston. Oh. Oh, settle. How clean that thing is. Spotless on, well, here. It's kind of mecky here. And that goop I was talking about when I was had the head off is just right along the edge here. It looks like it was just some gum and varnish and crap. But, at least now we can check our valve clearance. I think somebody's replaced that piston. There's no way that's original. <laughs> so we, we're at the top dead center, we're rocking it back and forth and you can see the valves moving. This is not top dead center compression stroke. That's intake. This would be top dead center of the exhaust stroke. Oh, watch that. Look at that valve. Hang on, let me get the camera straight, steady. See the wiggle, the sideways wiggle on that valve. There's a problem in there. Oh no! Well, let's get up top to the center of the compression stroke. So this is go pistons going down, intake valves open. Now we're on the squeeze. So when the piston's at the top, top of its travel. These valves, I shouldn't be able to turn them with my thumb. This one I can, so that valve clearance is gone. This one I can, so that valve clearance is gone. Let's get this back. Now it's on the, that would be the power stroke going back down, and now it's coming up on the exhaust stroke. So, exhaust valve is open. Let's see if I can get a picture of it. Now wobble. Engine, she's toast. Toast, the guide, she no good. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I thought it might have been a decent little project here, but sadly, she no go. I'm curious. I want to get a razor blade, scrape top of that piston off, see if I see any numbers on it, or possibly a. Well, if you see a number, say like. 010 or 030, that will tell you that it's an oversized piston. I just want to see if there's anything, any such numbers on this piston, because that is new. Somebody's had this apart. <laughs> well, nothing. No numbers. We've got a little arrow here. That's just telling us the piston faces that way. But, unfortunately, that is a problem.
that valve wiggle. That is a major problem. No go. Well, it looks like I got a pile of scrap. Hmm. I have a customer who needs that gas tank. <laughs> that little gas tank would be perfect to put on this little ME or Milwaukee equipment rototiller I've just been working on. Uh huh. That would make a cool clock. Leave the handle in it. Knock the center out. Put some hands on it. Just put a face behind here. Some hands on it. Oh yeah. Ay ay ay. Well guys, we're gonna cut that video here. Diagnostics of a pooched engine. Needs more than a tune-up. The note said a tune-up. It needs more than a tune-up. Anyways guys, thanks for joining me on this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you do subscribe, click the bell icon. It will notify you when I upload new videos. And until the next one, take care.